Hello, I'm Carla Schroer of Cultural Heritage Imaging. I co-founded Chi 15 years ago, and today I work as a trainer and a director for the organization. Today, I want to talk about how to collect sets of images to create 3D models using photogrammetry for complex subjects, subjects you would place on a turntable or larger scale subjects that you might walk around, including getting around corners. This video uh, adds on to information that was explained in the video, the basics of image capture for photogrammetry. Before we get started, I just want to acknowledge our collaborators, Tom Noble and Nefra Matthews from the U.S. Bureau of Land Management National Operations Center in Denver, Colorado. Tom and Nefra have been doing photogrammetry for decades, and they're really the best photogrammetry people we've ever met. We've been fortunate enough to have them collaborate with us and help develop the courses that we teach and the materials that we produce. So as a review, when we're collecting photogrammetric data, we want to have nine look angles on the subject in all areas. That gives us good strong geometry and provides information for good camera calibration, especially if you do landscape 90 degree and 270 degree images. If we're working on turntable subjects, we can also do this kind of collection of data to add scale to our model, and we'll talk more about that a little bit later. So remember that the base to distance, or how far we translate the camera between images and the distance to the subject to keep a two-thirds overlap, affects the software's ability to figure out exactly where the point is on the surface, or the depth uncertainty. So if we have a one-to-one -one ratio with a wide-angle lens, we have low depth uncertainty. If we have a one-to-five ratio, which is with a 60 millimeter lens, then we increase the depth uncertainty for where a point might land on the surface. But if we're going around a subject or if our camera is fixed and the subject's on a turntable and we're turning the subject, then we're also reducing the depth uncertainty by limiting the number of places that a pixel could land on the surface in how the uh, camera angles move around the surface. So here we have a camera position every 10 degrees, so we have 36 images to complete the circle. There's also power in the circle in that the software knows where the camera is on either side of it. So by completing the circle, we're able to squeeze out some of the error in figuring out the camera locations and camera calibration. It's really important that you look at the center of the subject with each image and that you're not crossing or turning the camera back and forth as you go. Now, if the subject's on a turntable and the camera's on a tripod, this isn't very likely to happen. But if you're walking around a subject, it's really important that you don't sort of go, oh, I need a little more of the subject in here and turn the camera and turn the camera. You want to physically move the camera to the correct positions around the subject. Just remember, don't cross the streams. But not everything's perfectly round. So how do we deal with more complex subjects that have maybe some flat areas and some corners or tighter areas? So the idea is that on the flatter area of the surface, for example, along here, we would move along, moving the camera with a two-thirds overlap along this flat area. But when we get close to this tight edge, then we start moving the camera in 10 to 15 degree increments. And you don't want to go more than 15 degrees because you want to make sure that the software can match the images as you go around the circle. Then where it's flat again, you go back to two thirds overlap, i.e. move the camera one third, move the camera one third of the horizontal field of view until you've completely gone around the subject. You can also use this technique for uh, moving along something like a cliff face or around a building and just make sure to have your camera follow the contours and shapes of the subject that you're trying to capture. Here's an example on a turntable in our studio. And you can see these are, this is just a manual turntable. It has markings every 10 degrees. The camera is on a clicker so that the uh, different images can be taken as the camera is the, as the subject is moved. Now, if you are working on a turntable, 
your subject is moving relative to the background. And so unless you have a perfect background that's perfectly clean and no pixels can be matched there, you have to mask the subject because the software, when it's matching the images and maxing, matching points, it doesn't know whether to match the points on the surface or to match the points in the background and it won't be able to align your images. So what you wanna do is take your 36 images or 24 images if you're using 15 degrees and then take the subject out and take an extra picture of just the background. This will aid in algorithms that can automatically help mask your images. When you've finished all your circuits, you can add scale to your model by taking an additional set of images with scale around the subject. And this is the, there are other ways to add scale, but we prefer this method. And so you can see that you would take just the same kind of images that we talked about in the beginning with nine look angles moving over the surface. This also gives you the opportunity to take some extra images to bring in where there might be, for example, undercuts or hidden areas that might not show up uh, completely from the circuits. So here's an example with the beaver mask. The rectangles here show where the camera positions were relative to the subject. And this first one is uh, going around the subject uh, in the orange is lit up. So that's the first circuit. Here's the second circuit moved up. Here's the third circuit moved down and pointed up. Then we have this we call a flat run, these extra images, which we use to add scale. And also in this case, we could fill in areas that might be occluded or not show up in the circuits by taking extra photos. Here's another example on a turntable. This is a sculpture by our colleague, Mark Mudge, a bronze. And same thing, it's on a turntable. We have nice, even illumination and we're shooting the subject around the turntable. Here's what the camera positions look like in this case. Now, if you have a perfectly clean background, it's possible to not have to mask your images. And so here's an example of a really clean background that was created at the Minneapolis Institute of Art with thanks to Charles Walbridge for sharing his photography. So in this environment, no masking is required because the only points that are gonna match on your images are on the surface of the subject. In this case, there's also uh, an automatic robot arm that can completely shoot the images. And so there are different levels of automation that are possible, but you don't have to have these things. You can work with just a simple, inexpensive turntable uh, if that's all that you have. Now I'd like to close with an example of a subject that is not moving, not on a turntable, and we, I walked around it in order to collect the 3D information. So this is a standing stone. It's in Western Australia on the Dampier Peninsula. And there are many of the standing stones in this area that's also full of petroglyphs. So you can see here from the screenshot showing all of the image camera positions that I walked around the circle three times. I had the camera on a monopod. I took one at kind of uh, head high, one down low, and one up higher. And then I also had placed my scale bars. You can see a little bit of one here uh, in other areas around it. And in this case, because there were petroglyphs on the rocks, I took additional photos to bring into my project that could show some of the petroglyphs. So in summary, if you're using a turntable, you want to move 10 to 15 degrees at a time. You also want to take a background image without the subject there for each camera position. So if you have three circuits, you should have a background image without the subject for each circuit. Finally, if you're walking around a subject, you want to move the camera based on the shape of the subject. So in some areas, you might be moving uh, it with a two-thirds overlap or translating one-third of the horizontal field of view. And when you're going around a tight area, a corner, or a similar shape, then you want to move the camera no more than 15 degrees at a time when you're going around corners. Thanks for listening. Also, you can come take photogrammetry training with us in our studio. Check it out.